anyway, if you can and are planning on coming to my party, it's my party and I'll shout if I want to. Anyway. <laughs> uh, that's an old song. Um, put your name on here. It's a pot faith so that tell us, uh, you know, what you're going to bring, how much you're going to bring of it, and then how many people are attending. I know we've done that once, but now we got the food added to it. So let's, uh, we'll start over here with Jack and then we'll go down the line. And if you don't get it, make sure you raise your hand and get it. I got a second thing just for the men, for the men's fellowship, which would be on the 25th. And if you uh, can commit to that and want to attend, then we need your name and how many are attending. So I guess we'll start back here with Armand. And uh, just make sure all the men get it. Are we up and running? Yeah. On uh, uh, the same, uh, the, the right angle and everything? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Let me see if I can get it here. Um, get my monitor going here. Hallelujah. Go to my page. Okay. Oh, the joys of technology, right? Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me get make sure this is... Okay, so it's showing me. It's showing jo Josh's fingers in the way of the camera. <laughs> okay, I have no second here. You've got to go to my Facebook page, and you've got to bring it up as a new um, a new broadcast. So just go to, do you know how to do that, Justin? You do yeah. it on, that's his monitor for that camera. All right, um, by the way, I've got a note up here. It was, it was for the Spanish ministry, but I'm gonna read it to you. Last Wednesday, which is now a week and a half ago, May 1st, I misplaced my sunglasses. And uh, that my, my goods, the ones Mary bought me for Christmas, I think it was, or my birthday, anyway. The, the, the good ones. <laughs> um, they're Oakley's. Uh, so I said, I misplaced my sunglasses. If you or someone you know was in or around this building or property, found a pair of black Oakley sunglasses, please text me and I give my phone number. I haven't heard anything yet, but they're coming back in the name of Jesus. I'm getting them back. Not willing to be stolen from. Amen. So the devil has to release it, and the angels of God are going to bring them back one way or another. Anybody remember the testimony of my diamond ring? Yeah. Clear from Florida. Lost in the grass, ended up in a box sitting next to my desk, <laughs> taped shut. Mm -hmm. Now, how in the world could that be? Well, angels, I think, have a sense of humor. <laughs> but I sent my angels out to get it and bring it back. I wasn't willing to lose that ring. Well, just like that, I'm not willing to lose these sunglasses. Now, they're not as valuable as that ring was, but or is. But at the same time, I'm not willing to lose. I'm not willing to be stolen from. I don't care how big or small it is, I'm not going to let the devil steal from me. If he gets by with it one area, then he'll try another area. And as long as he keeps getting by, he'll keep pestering you. You've got to be like Jesus, resist him on every account, and he'll finally get tired of messing with you, and he'll leave and try and figure out if there's a better time to come back. We're not going to give him any better time to come back. Amen? Amen. All right, so now we're back up and running. Karina, sorry for the interruption. Facebook shut us down for our music. We're back. Hallelujah. He, she can't see you. <laughs> anyway, Jose was waving at you, but he's not on camera, so praise God. Anyway, uh, let me give you some numbers here. Last Sunday, we had uh, 79 views of our service, with the majority of them coming by the end of Sunday night, which I thought was, that was just tremendous. We had like 57-something uh, by Sunday evening when I sat down, and uh, then by the time we went to bed, it was even higher than that. Uh, last Wednesday's Bible study has jumped from 58. Well, it's been jumping every week. I, I look at my numbers here, and they're increasing every week. So we went from the week before, 58 views to 64 views, and we're not even to next Wednesday yet. So more people are tuning in. More people are finding us. Hallelujah. Mary's uh, high number on her message that she did, uh, what, two months ago now? Not this past one, but the one before up to 100 and hers keeps increasing it went from 180 uh, from uh, 98 to 100 so we had two more views on that just in the past week uh, my high v number of views on one message which is the part three of living in prophetic times went from uh, 188 to 190 so we're still getting views on that and that was back in march mm -hmm. that i ministered that uh, the google searches we jumped 101 uh, hits on Google searches for churches in the West Valley. And so we went up to 1,250. 
and some of those are going to show up in the name of Jesus. And then on Google Views, which means they actually looked at our page, they didn't just find it, they, they took time to look at it. Some have asked for directions. We went from 1840 last week to 1920 this week. That's another 80 views or hits on our page. So God is getting us out there. People are finding out, and it hasn't yet translated into attendance, but it will. As those numbers continue to increase, there will be a certain percentage that will end up, and maybe not even the time they looked at it. They might not say, oh, I'm going next week. But down the road, that's the Holy Spirit's job, amen? That's right. And he's going to draw them in, and they won't be very long. This place is going to be packed in the name of Jesus. Amen. You hear me say it? Amen. It will be packed. We'll have to put down every chair we've got, figure out how we're going to accommodate everybody, and, if, and we will probably end up going to two service. Although I did notice an empty space uh, in this building. I haven't inquired about it yet, but I did notice we had, there's an empty space. We're not ready financially for it, but when the time is right and we have the finances, uh, we have the people, then we'll increase. Uh, all of you on Facebook, you can like and share, and I say this now, I know Karina's on there right now. I don't know who else uh, may end up watching today or down the road, but if you get blessed by something that is said or done here in the service, please like and share. If you're on Facebook, you know how to do that. On Periscope and on Twitter, I don't know the, the process of doing that, but if you're on there, you know, so please do the same thing and promote our services. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Popcorn. <laughs> All right. Uh, men's Fellowship, we've got a sign-up board, so we want to know how many men uh, not only want to come, but will commit to it. And uh, then we'll decide on, you know, First of all, if we're going to do it this month, we canceled it last month. Uh, we had a lot of things going on and people were busy. And then we have to decide you know, the food and so forth. Uh, Wednesday Bible study, six o'clock. Uh, and I'm not even gonna ask for a show of hands, but here's a question to ponder. If you're only coming to church once a week, you're getting one hot meal. Could your body survive on that? Huh? Well, I listen to Brother Copeland, I listen to Fred Price, and I, li I don't know, is Fred Price still on? I haven't seen him for a while. Huh? His, son. His son's on. His son. Okay. Um, uh, and, and then Bill Winston and, and Jerry Savelle. And, but you know what? That does not replace and never has been meant to replace your local church and what God has given me as your pastor to share with you. Those guys cannot be your pastors unless you move there and attend their church. Brother Colvin cannot be your pastor because he's not a pastor. So if you're making him your pastor, you're out of line with the Word of God. But if all you're getting is one hot meal a week, you are getting anemic. You're getting uh, skinny spiritually, if I can say it that way. And hey, Tim, good to have you. My brother's watching. Praise the Lord. Uh, Jennifer Rosa is watching. She just came on. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is we have the midweek Bible study. If you can't get here at 6 o'clock for some reason, at least watch the, the Bible study because I'm teaching some powerful things on Wednesday nights, things I'm not teaching on Sunday mornings. And I'll tell you, it will encourage you, it will strengthen your faith, and it's just straight teaching for, for that whole hour's time frame. Uh, maybe I take five minutes to, you know, give some announcements or whatever, but that's it. All right, so you ought to take advantage of that, and it would be great if, uh, and I know, um, Anna has been uh, watching because I've seen her name pop up on there. But don't just, uh, folks, I think we, we're so busy, busy, busy that we got this fast food, food, fast food mentality and we, we watch something for five minutes and we're on to something else. No, stop. Take time to listen and learn and grow. Amen? Amen. Thank you. All right, so I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, if you want to get copies of the notes, you got to join the Timothy Club. You got to see Josh on that, and um, I think that's it. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all mothers, everybody, all the mothers, stand up. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Hallelujah, <laughs> Amen. Now, let's see. I'm uh, not sure who the youngest would be, uh, and I'm going to give the senior. Uh, he can sit down there. Everybody else has sat down. So. <laughs> she can't see behind her. So you all sit down. If we're on the front row, we don't know what you're doing. We're still standing sometimes. 
Um, anyway, Willie is our senior mother, and uh, I, I just happen to know that. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, it used to be Jerry, but she's not here this morning. So uh, she would be our senior mother in this church, and Willie following up second. And then the rest of us aren't all that far behind. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so we, we respect you mothers, and we appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, I've shared with you sometimes, my mother and I didn't always get along. Uh, there, there were, all my growing up years, there were, you know, challenges. Um, and I love my mother, but uh, we had challenges growing up. And um, yet I respect her as my mother. She's, she's my mother, you know. And I, I love her, and I miss her. She went home to be with the Lord in 2006, and... And uh, we kept her around with our faith for about a year because she was already saying she wanted to go home uh, a year before. And we kept saying, no, no, we're not going to let you go. And when she finally went, the doctor said it, there was nothing wrong. They, they did the autopsy and everything they do. And they said, we couldn't find anything wrong with her. It's like somebody flipped the switch and she just shut down. So yeah, asked my mom. She takes control. <laughs> she said, all right, this is it. I'm going now. <laughs> so anyway. But, but I love her as my mom. Uh, Mary's mother's with the Lord now, and, and uh, you know, we, we miss our, well, we miss our fathers too, but it's not Father's Day. <laughs> but we do miss our mothers once they leave us. Amen? Amen. So we appreciate and respect all you mothers. Praise God. All right. Uh, I'm looking to see if there's something else I want to mention to you. Um, this CD on the back table, it's uh, my message. Well, it's really not a message. It's just healing scriptures set to music and I did this a number of years ago we continue to get testimonies from people who listen to this and get healed listening to it it's got such an anointing on it so they are on the back table and if you uh, need to have something you can always put on and it will just be nothing but healing scriptures to encourage you and build you up that's it amen amen, amen. all right now one more thing I want to show you how do you like this It is our entire blood covenant course from the School of Ministry. This is for this actually has been made up for our correspondence school. We've, we're starting to get some orders from our correspondence courses, and uh, this is one of them, blood covenant. And uh, actually, I've been working on this all week, but um, it, we we're, we're going to add some pages for the CDs that go in here. But uh, Josh is still working on the CDs before I can mail it out. But we've got all the notes, every note. Even the mistakes and errors. Because <laughs> uh, like I said, my notes, particularly the School of Ministry, were meant for me to, to go from, not for somebody else that's studying the subject. So I've had to go through there and, and, and do some refining, although there's still, uh, there, I looked at one set of notes, I remember it was all scripture, maybe just a word here and a word there, because that's the way I minister. God gives me the scripture, the, word, the Bible, the word, and then as I read it and the Holy Spirit takes charge of that scripture and begins to expound on it. And so that's the way I minister. But when you're studying, it's a little bit different. Because um, So I, I, I put a note in there and said, it, it, the only way this is going to fully benefit you is if you actually listen to the CDs in conjunction with the notes and then add your own notes. Now, we offer this on, our, on the church website for credit and for, for a school of ministry uh, diploma and for non-credit which means it's it's less expensive uh, but it's available on our uh, website if any of you happen to be interested we're we're going through it's taken time uh, we had to we still got to go through our files and find all of our school of ministry stuff but I've got notes from a number of the classes and my goal is to put all of our classes from the school of ministry uh, on uh, a format like this and make them available for people that want to further their studies in the Word of God. Some want to get credit, some just want the, the material. And so there's different costs involved, but that's all on the website. And if, I, if anybody asks, which one would you recommend? And I say this to you that are members of this church as well as anybody else. The first one, the foundation of everything we believe, is the series, this one right here, The Blood Covenant. And you start there, and then you can go any direction you want to go study-wise from that point forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. I think that was the last uh, thing I wanted to share with you. Open your Bibles this morning. Hallelujah. Are we still on? Yes. <laughs> All right.
Praise God. By the way, while you're doing that, I want to give you a good testimony. I've been kind of help, letting you keep track of my weight loss uh, uh, challenge. Challenge to me, but not. Uh, but I'm overcoming. Amen. Uh, since the first of April, I've lost about 14 pounds. Hallelujah. So you maybe can't tell it yet because it takes longer to go from the middle. And I, I can tell it everywhere else. Every, even my pants are looser. But um, I've got a goal that by, I hit my, by the time I hit my 70th birthday, I'm under 250. I, I was up uh, at one point when I started a year, a year ago, was it? A year and a half ago? I was up to 285. And I'm sure you all could tell. I, you know, I, I tend to not look at myself in the mirror much if I can help it. It's just the way I am. But uh, one day I was standing and I turned sideways. I said, whoa, what's that thing hanging off my chest? <laughs> oh, my stomach. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's, that's not good. It's probably not good for me. And it, I, I've noticed I have more energy. Uh, my agility to move quick and, and has, has begun to return. And I find myself doing things that I couldn't do for a long time. So praise God. What's it take to lose weight? It takes discipline and commitment and a decision. And you got to stick to it. Amen? And, well, you're on a diet. No, I'm not on any diet. I just changed the way I do things. I changed what I eat, how I eat, uh, when I eat, and, and just things as the Holy Spirit has. See, any diet you get on, you got to stay on. Otherwise, you'll gain the weight back. So I just I'm not going to go on a diet. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit guide me in weight loss and he has been and he tells me don't eat that or don't eat that today uh go ahead and eat this or whatever it may be and, and really isn't that what we want We're, we've been talking for three months about being led by the spirit should we be led by the spirit when it comes to our our weight and our health yeah. amen yeah. amen so i'm doing it if i can do it you can do it everybody say a pastor can do it i can do it now, some of you probably don't care about weight or anything like that, but I got to tell you, uh, you start getting overweight, it starts affecting your health. And we need to have a body that is the temple holy and separate and healthy <laughs> so God can use us longer. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Did you find the scripture I gave you? How many, how many know what scripture I gave you? I didn't. Jack's paid attention. <laughs> I didn't give you a scripture. But... Any scripture is good. I mean, you can open up and, you know, you get blessed. All right. Um, this morning on our, on our uh, social media platforms, um, I put on there a title, God has a plan for your deliverance. That's only part of what I want to touch on this morning. How much time I've got will depend on how far I go. But let me do a brief recap on some of the things we've been uh, studying uh, we talked about developing a tender-hearted spirit, so we become more sensitive to the voice of the Spirit and the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? How many have learned to distinguish the difference between the voice of your spirit and the voice of the Holy Spirit? Still working on that? Okay, we gotta learn, we've got to learn the difference. We talked about having confidence toward God, uh, and i got scriptures. If you get the notes, I've put all the scriptures there as references. Confidence toward God if our heart does not what? If your heart does not restrain, well, the word in the King James is condemn. But it means to restrain. If your heart is not restraining you, what is your heart? It's your spirit man, right? If your spirit man is not restraining you, then you can have confidence toward God. What's that mean? It means I'm in the right place. I'm doing the right thing, doing what I ought to be doing. Amen? But when you go to do something, or and, and check this, even... Check your words before you open your mouth and speak. Listen, what's happening here? Should I say it? How should I say it? You know, now is now the time. When I pray in the mornings, one of the things I pray is that the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered the Lord. Am I talking too fast for you? <laughs> I have no caffeine in me right now. <laughs> this is just the anointing is on me, and I'm just trying to listen and go the direction the Lord wants me to. Um, I pray in the morning, Lord, the Bible says that the, the uh, steps of a righteous man are order the Lord because of the blood of Jesus. I am a righteous man. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. I'm in the process of being perfected, but I am righteous. I have right standing with God is what that means. I said, so Holy Spirit, order my steps 
But beyond that, order my conversation and my decisions. Let me know what to say, when to say it, how to say it, what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. That pretty much covers things, doesn't it? See, that's the way we need to become is sensitive to what should I say or not say. And there's sometimes we say things just they come out of our emotions, our mind, and after we said them, you know, you can't take them back. You can apologize and repent, but they're out there. Amen? So we need to become sensitive so that we are speaking, like Jesus said, I only speak what I hear the Father speak. Concerning our daily living, we should be speaking according to what we've heard or seen the Father say in the Word. And Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. So we talked about that a little bit. Uh, we talked about the fact the Holy Spirit never condemns us. Right. He doesn't condemn us. He may speak to us about restraint at times. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But your human spirit, your recreated, born-again human spirit is the one that restrains you and says, don't do that, don't say that. We just have to be slow. That's why the Bible says, be slow to what? Speak. speak. Be slow to speak. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. We shouldn't just speak the first thing that comes to our thinking. Praise God. Now, here's uh, out of Revelation 12, 10. Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. He's also called the condemner. Now, I could not find the proper spelling for condemner. So I, put, I spelled it the way I think it should be. Condemn her. That sound good enough? If it's wrong, I apologize. Scratch it out on your note. Well, you don't have notes, so don't worry about it. All right. He's also in Matthew 4, 3, called the tempter. Who tempts you? The Bible says you're tempted when you're drawn away by your own lust. Well, but who's the tempter? The devil ultimately is the tempter. You can't say, well, the devil made me do it. Ultimately, you yielded to the temptation. It was a decision or a choice that you made to yield to the temptation. I'm not talking about something that we think is outrageous sin. I'm talking about just little things. You know, anything that's not of faith is sin. That's what the Bible says. So we, and, and sin means missing the mark, right? All right, so we have to understand that there's, there's things the devil will tempt us to do that at first we don't think are sin. Like offense, we've talked about that a number of times. Offense, that act of being offended has put you over into the category of sin. If you don't deal with it, forgive, and put it behind you, then you are still in that sin category because you never repented of it. If you repent, you turn around and go the opposite direction. It means if you got upset with somebody, you go deal with it. The Bible says you ought against anyone. What do you do? You go to them. Amen? And we instead of going to them and dealing with it and getting it all worked out because the devil's the liar, uh, we just let it fester and then we get other people upset at us because we got upset at them and it just snowballs. Amen? So he's called the tempter, the tester, the trier, and the way I put it, the tribulator. <laughs> but he can only do it if you let him do it. Amen. All right. So now, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I did give you a verse, a scripture. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And I'm waiting for the pages to turn. By the way, no candy crush and, and no, uh, uh, no texting each other in church, please. That's disrespectful to me and to God and to the Spirit of God, to everybody else. <laughs> so let's, if you're going to be on your devices, make sure it's for one thing. You're either looking up Scripture or writing notes on what I'm saying. Otherwise, just shut your phone off and wait till you get out of church. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Don't get offended now because that's sin. <laughs> I'm your pastor. The Bible says not only am I supposed to encourage you, but it also says show people what way their lives are wrong and rebuke them when necessary. That's part of my job. Amen. Thank you for that. Finally. Oh, that was a long pause there. <laughs> well, you, you know I love you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't bother with you. Amen. Whew, long pause. Can we can we edit that? Edit out the pause? <laughs> well, all right, you all got that 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Amplified translation. If you got a program like I've got, Olive Tree uh, Bible uh, program, or, or app, uh, you can just click on whatever translation you want to use. It'll pop right up in the same verse. So, verse 13, for no temptation. Now, I, I put in my notes, for those of you that get them, in, in bold letters, not italicized, I put in what, what I've added to it. 
So here's what I've put in there. No temptation, no trial, test, tribulation, or temptation, tribulation. All right. Why would I put that in there? Because the same Greek word has been translated all those different things. God doesn't tempt, test, trial, or tribulate anybody. We need to get that clear. God is not our problem. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you, when you're under pressure and the devil's beating you over the head, you begin to get mad at God like he has something to do with it. God is not the one testing you. God is not the one trying you. God is not the one that's putting tribulation on you. He's not the one condemning you. Hallelujah. All right. So, for no temptation, no trial test, uh, temptation, tribulation, uh, regard as enticing to sin. By the way, sin is anytime you miss the mark. Uh, no matter how it comes or where it leads has overtaken you and laid hold on you, that is not common to man. If you got it in your Bible there, you ought to highlight or underline on your device, whatever you need to do, common to man. Why? Because you don't have anything special that's not common to the rest of us. Some people get this idea, and it's a lie from the devil. Well, nobody understands. I mean, they don't have to go through. They've never been through what I've been through. There's nothing the Bible says we've got to go through what you've been through. But everything you experience as trial, test, tribulation, or temptation is common to every human being. In other words, it's not something the devil can put on you out of the blue that the Bible doesn't cover. Hallelujah. God covered it all. Amen? All right. So, common to man. Where was I? Okay. Uh, that is, no temptation or trial, test, or tribulation has come on you. That is beyond human resistance and that is not adjusted and adapted. That means limited and belonging to human experience. In other words, God limits what the devil can do to us. Amen? When you, even when you get in sin, even when you get in unbelief, you get in fear, or anxiety, or whatever else you want to put in that category, even when we put ourselves over in that territory, there's still limits by God put on what he can do to us. If he could kill you, he'd do it right now. But he can't do it. It takes time for the devil to get through into a situation in your life where he can bring something on you to kill you or cause an accident to take your life. It takes time for that door to open. But God has limits. And he won't let him go beyond the limits of what's common to human experience. Amen? All right. So it says... Uh, Beyond human resistance, that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience. And such as man can bear. Oh, Pastor, I can't take it any longer. <laughs> I've had people call me, I, I don't know what else, I've done all I can do, I don't know, I, I can't take it anymore. Maybe I should just end it. I've had people tell me that on the phone. But no, 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 back up, back up. That's the devil lying to you. Because there's nothing the devil can put on you that's, first of all, not common to man. And secondly, that you cannot bear. That, that word bear means to remain firm. Hallelujah. I can be firm. I don't care how bad it looks. I can still remain firm because I have God's promise. He won't let the devil go too far. As long as I'm turning to God and trying my best to do things his way. Amen? But God is faithful. God, everybody say, God is faithful. God is faithful, God is faithful to his word. word and to his compassionate nature. God's also faithful to his own nature. He's not a condemning God. He's not a, a, a God that's sitting there with a baseball bat and ready to beat you over the head. He's compassionate. That's his nature. He's loving. That's his nature. He's forgiving. That's his nature. He's long-suffering. He's patient. He's kind. He's generous. Shouldn't that be our nature? Amen. Uh, and to his compassionate nature, and he can be trusted. You can trust God. He can be trusted not to let you be tempted, tried, assayed. <laughs> There's one of those automatic correction uh, things I, I was talking to Jack about before the service. I didn't catch it. It's not rested. It's tested. <laughs> yeah, God will not let you be rested. Actually, it's the opposite. That's autocorrect that I didn't catch. Or tested or tribulated. <laughs> Beyond your ability, beyond your ability, and strength of resistance and power to endure. The word endure means to remain firm under pressure without giving up, without giving in. Some of you need to get firm under pressure. 
when the pressure comes on, don't give up, don't give in. Hallelujah. Because God's faithful to his word. All right. So, uh, power do it. But with, now listen here, and I added my, my phrase in there. This comes from studies in the uh, original language. But with or alongside or parallel to, that's literally what the words mean here in the Greek. And, and even if you go back in Hebrew, you'll find in the Old Testament the same thought and the same teaching. I'll show you that. All right, so power to endure, but, but with the temptation, test, trial, and tribulation, he will always, and everybody say always. 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 That's not my note. That comes out of the Amplified Translation. Always also provide the way out, the means of escape to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up or remain firm under it patiently. And the word patiently is constancy. Remain firm under the pressure, the attack, and never bury. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I put there's a lot in that one verse, isn't there? Especially Amplified and then uh, the, the Pastor Bill's additions to it. The whole point being... God has a plan for your deliverance. God has a plan to meet every need you're faced with. It doesn't matter what the physical need, emotional need, mental need, financial need, relational need. God has a plan, but the devil will come and try to destroy God's plan, try to hinder you from walking in God's plan. He'll put the pressure on you. He'll lie to you, beat you over the head. You'll wake up in the morning thinking the bad thoughts he's put in your head. You ever notice that when you're under pressure? When you become conscious in the morning sometimes, the first thing that comes into your mind is, oh my God, what am I going to do? I got this problem. I got that problem. What am I going to do with it? You go to bed at night. You can't hardly get to sleep because you're thinking about the problems. So that's all the devil lying to you. He's telling you opposite to what God says. Amen? God's got a plan for your deliverance, no matter what it may be. So we have to come to a place where we put our trust in God, even if we don't understand why or how not my job to figure out how it's my job to believe him hallelujah all right now we have an example uh joseph's brothers sold him into slavery in genesis 50 20 verse 20 it says but as for you ye thought or planned evil ain't he's talking to the devil here he doesn't realize who he's talking to but that's who he's talking to he said he's talking to his brothers but he's really talking to the devil because the brothers were just the instruments. It was the devil that inspired him to be sold into slavery, right? Okay. So he said, as for you, talking to his brothers, ye planned evil against me, but God. <laughs> that, but God, that's in the New Testament too. But God. You always, when the devil lies to you and you got a challenge, you got something that's facing that you don't know what to do, you can always say, but God. <laughs> but God has a plan. Not to go through, not to lose, not to... All that junk, okay? It says, and I again added the additional translation. He said, God, in the King James, God meant it for good, but in actual translation, God had a parallel plan for escape unto good. God had a parallel plan. Well, that sounds like we read in in First Corinthians ten, doesn't it? God had a, a parallel plan when when the, the moment the devil implemented an attack against you God's plan was right there running parallel with it all you've got to do is get over on God's plan and walk free hallelujah amen didn't we read in 1 Corinthians 10 that uh, that um, God provides a way of escape see well, it's a lot of, there's a lot of Christians I see stuff posted on Facebook all the time by people that love God but just never been taught on this issue well, God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. God's trying to teach me something. I'm going through this trial, this test, the tribulation, and, and I know God's got something in it for me. Well, God didn't put it on you. God's the one that's got a plan for your deliverance, Amen. your way of escape. You may have to be firm under pressure. You do. But you got to understand God's got a plan. And so what do you do? You're going to have to go back to God and begin to pray and spend some time before the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, give me an utterance to pray this thing through. Show me what I need to do. And then learn to listen and be obedient to what God says. Because be obedient to what God is saying is what will help get you out of that problem. Hallelujah. 
All right. God always has a parallel plan for our escape. Always, always, always. Isn't that we, what we read there in 1 Corinthians? Always, 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 always. I want you to get it. Always has a plan for our deliverance, for our escape. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Now that was actually review. <laughs> I got so excited about this last night, I told Pastor Mary, I said, you know, I, I may just preach the review this tomorrow. I'm, I'm, I was so turned on last night, just studying and going over these things I just shared with you. It, it encouraged me. That's what happens when you get in the Word. It encourages you, you know. If you don't ever get in the Word for yourself and all you do is listen to somebody, whether it's me or somebody else, you're not getting all that God's saying. Because you got to get in there and study it out for yourself. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved of God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you don't do it, if you don't get in and study for yourself, even though you heard me say it, you took notes and you got my notes or whatever it may be, you can, that's not enough. You have a responsibility to go to God and make his promises yours personally, not just what pastor said. But, I mean, when the devil attacks, you can't say, oh, devil, now pastor said. he just laugh at you. He ain't going to listen to what pastor said. But when you say, no, the word of God says, and you quote the scripture, and, and you declare it to him, that's what runs him off. Resist the devil. That's how you do it. And he will flee. Hallelujah. We're going to watch the devil running away from us more, I believe. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Let's backtrack to uh, a subject that we've talked a little bit about. It goes along with what I've just been sharing with you. We, we've been talking over the last few months about being led by the Spirit, listening to the voice of the Spirit, and, and becoming sensitive and, and so forth. The Bible tells us the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Even in our the midst of our temptations, tests, trials, and tribulations, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Uh, what more important time is there than in the middle of our problems we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to us. When things are going good, you know, unfortunately a lot of Christians, when things are going good, they don't spend time listening to the Holy Spirit or praying or in the Word or nothing. They just coast along and join the good life until pressure comes. And then they scramble around, oh my God, what was the pastor said? What was, well, if you'd been in that Word studying it for yourself, you'd know what God said instead of what pastor said. Amen? John 16, 13 from the King James translation. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will, everybody say he will, he will, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Well, when you're confessing the word, guess what? He's hearing that because as far as he's concerned, that's God talking. Anytime we're speaking the word, the Holy Spirit listens to that. You understand that? So he will begin to speak to us and even take it a step further and show us things that are to come. And we need to pay attention. When we start getting a revelation of things to come, it's a warning. It's something that he's saying, get ready. You've got a fight coming. Hallelujah. Isn't it a good thing that you can know ahead of time what the devil's plans are and that the Holy Spirit can give you the, uh, the, the solution before the attack ever comes? Yeah. Do you know what most of us do? We go along, the attack comes, we panic. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? We haven't heard from God. We don't have the plan. We didn't know it was coming. We were surprised. <laughs> no, nothing should take us by surprise. So where is the Holy Spirit speaking? We, we went over this a number of times already. Is he speaking in our head? Is he speaking through our head? No. Is he speaking through our body? No. Is he speaking through our emotions? No. Where is he speaking? Our through our spirit. Amen? Amen. Remember Proverbs 20, 27, the Bible says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Well, we don't use candles today unless we have a blackout and that's all you've got. I've equipped our house with a bunch of LED lights, LED flashlights that, you know, don't consume much power. And, and uh, you know, we've had actually where we live in the past two, two or three years, we've had, I think, four blackouts in our community. 
total power blackouts. And uh, so I've made sure we, we don't have candles. <laughs> we, we do have candles, but we don't have to use them because we've got other preparations. Amen? Amen? But you understand what that's for. A candle, flashlight, a lantern. If, you, if you're a camper or a hunter, you know what a lantern is because <laughs> you use them at your campsite at night. All right? The whole idea is a source of illumination. Amen? Hello? Amen. And why do we need something illuminated? So we can see where we're going. We can see what's ahead. See if we're about ready to walk off a cliff. Amen. I was hunting up in Oregon one time, and, and uh, well, I haven't thought about this in a while. Um, I, I had gone off on a trail chasing a deer. It wasn't that far ahead of me because every once in a while I'd hear it, and I knew I was probably no more than 30, 40 yards away, but I couldn't see it. It was getting dark, but I saw his trail, and I kept following this trail, and it kept getting darker and darker and darker, and I kept getting further and further and further away from the truck, and uh, I wasn't familiar with the area, so when uh, it finally got dark and I could no longer see the trail, I thought, eh, maybe I better head back. So my eyes had been tuned in to that trail, and uh, even though I did have a little headlight on, uh, <clears throat> I, when I finally looked up and looked around, man, it was pitch black. It was so dark. I said, well, Holy Spirit, <laughs> help me get back to the truck, you know. And, and up in the area where I hunt, uh, or, or have hunted, um, there's bears, there's mountain lions. And uh, so you, you have to be aware of what's going on around you. And uh, <clears throat> one day we, we tracked uh, an elk that was being tracked by a mountain lion. Now that's kind of exciting because you're tracking a mountain lion. And mountain lions are pretty smart, you know. But praise God, we've always been the winners. <laughs> anyway, so I turned around, I'm looking around, and I'm walking along praying in the spirit, and my thoughts are going, you know, there might be a bear right behind you, you never know. It might be a mountain lion waiting to jump off a tree, and you know, they call the mountain lion the silent killer. Jumps off a tree in the middle of, of no, you don't even know he's there, and boom, you know, uh, not, not, no mountain lions, no bears, and, they, and all of a sudden, I saw something happen I've never heard of, I never saw before. The snow on the ground began to glow. I'm, I'm telling you, like somebody turned on a light under the snow. Now Mary said, oh yeah, she's from Wisconsin, so she says she's seen that kind of thing at night in Wisconsin. Uh, anybody that has come from cold country, you, you know, yeah, it's a, somehow, I don't know how it works, uh, the snow manages to gather and amplify the dimmest light from the stars or the moon, and all of a sudden the, the snow began to glow. I just reached that dark point where the snow would, would stand out, and I could see my trail all the way back to the truck. I thought, praise God, who needs a flashlight? <laughs> who needs a lantern? I got the Holy Ghost showing me the way by the snow. You know, I thought that was pretty cool. But what do we need illumination for? So we can see where we're going. We don't walk off a cliff. We don't, we don't run into a, a, a tree in my case. I, I didn't want to run into a big old tree, you know, fumbling along in the dark there. Boom, what was that, you know? Well, praise God, the Holy Spirit allowed that snow to show me the way. I've had a couple things like that happen while hunting that just, I'm still to this day when I tell the story, my mind says, did that really happen? <laughs> really? Is it, is, is it as fantastic as you're saying it is? And I think back, yeah, that's exactly what happened. You know, mm -hmm. Praise God. Well, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. You don't need the snow. You don't need the flashlight. You don't need the candle. You got it inside you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. If I had to go in pitch black and didn't have a light, I believe the Holy Spirit would have still guided me back to the truck. Oh, it's slow, man. That was a bigger pause than the last one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. So, John 14, 26 from the King James translation. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Who's the Comforter? The Holy Ghost. Now, now when I hear about things happening uh, in different places, um, these shootings that have taken place, and I'm buying that one, I... I'll tell you, when I'm praying tonight, I bind up that spirit of mass murder and shootings. I come against that, and I break his power, and I bind it up. And we got to do that. Amen? But when I hear about somebody who's been uh, maybe kidnapped or maybe been uh, attacked or something like that, uh, or had an accident and somebody was killed, I, I pray for the family. Holy Spirit, you're the comforter. Go comfort that family. 
encourage them. Somehow, some way, you know what needs to be done. But I ask the Holy Spirit on their behalf to move into that situation, bring comfort and encouragement. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send, <clears throat> excuse me, in my name, he shall teach you. What is he going to do? He's going to comfort first because he's a comforter. But he will teach us all things. Everybody say all things. All say it like I said, all things. All, <laughs> all right. He's going to teach us all things. Oh, Pastor, now, do you really believe he's going to teach us all things? Anything you need to know is part of that all. And we all have different needs in our lives. And the Bible says he'll teach us all things. So whatever we need to know about dealing with our situation, he already knows. And he will teach us what we need to know. And then it goes on, says, and bring all things, everybody say all things, all things. to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. So not only do we have the Holy Spirit who knows all things, ministering all the things that we need in our situation, but then he'll remind us of what the Word says, because remember, Jesus is the Word made flesh. So we, we really can incorporate the whole Word, the Bible, in that. Holy Spirit is going to bring back to our remembrance what the Word says, not just the specific words in red. You know what the words in red are, right? New Testament, the words of Jesus. But since he's the Word, and the words in red didn't happen until he became flesh, but he still spoke throughout the Word from the Old Testament to the New Testament. So the Holy Spirit is going to remind us of what the Word says. He, he'll kind of do what I do. What, what do I say when you come to me with a problem? Yeah, everybody who's been here for a while knows that. What's the Word say? Well, yeah, and, and then I sometimes people are so confused. People have asked me over the years, how do you remember so much of the scriptures, so much of the Bible, the subjects, the people, the stories, and stuff like that? Well, it's not that I've got such a great memory, although I believe I do. It's that I've got the Holy Ghost. And when I get up here to preach, you know, now, because I'm making more detailed notes, uh, a lot of the things I'm sharing with you are in the notes. But at the same time, there'll be things like that story of, of hunting up in the snow. It's not in my notes because I didn't, the Holy Spirit didn't bring it to me then. I like it to be fresh anyway when I get up here to preach. All right, Holy Spirit's going to speak and take me a different direction and show me something to share with you. Amen? All right. So it's the Holy Spirit. What does he do? While I'm preaching, teaching, ministering to somebody, what's he do? He comes up and speaks and rises up in me and gives me the words. He gives me the things to say, the word to share with somebody. We minister everywhere we go. We, we minister at the coffee bean. We sit and talk to people. Uh, I've ministered to the young people that are working there. I've ministered to other people that sit at our table or around us. And, and, and I get to sharing. Last, uh, this last week, I got to talking to a guy. This guy is the one whose mother we prayed for, and God has healed her and restored her. She had Alzheimer's, and she's restored. And he says when, when that restoration happened, he said all of a sudden she couldn't stop talking because her memory came back. And so all of a sudden she had things to say, and she hadn't been talking for a long time. And she, he said, I couldn't shut her up. When, when she got healed, she, all of a sudden she just talking about it, everything that she could think of. Probably all that stuff been bottled up inside and her mind couldn't put it together, you know. But when she got healed, all of a sudden it came together. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So we ministered to him on a, a couple of different areas. I was talking to him this week uh, about his business. And I spoke some words of faith over his business. God's going to bless you, increase you, and so forth. Things that we ought to be doing when we talk to people. See, we are God's representative. Do you, do you realize that? You are Christ's ambassador. That means you represent him and you speak on his behalf. That's not just pastor. That's every one of us. And that's every one of you watching right now. You are Christ's ambassador. God has put you and left you in this world for this time and day that we live in so you can represent him and speak God's word to people. And that doesn't mean you're going around quoting scripture. But you're speaking faith. You're speaking words of hope, words of deliverance, words of healing. Words of answered prayer, amen, into people's lives. Hallelujah. When, and I, I put in the notes here, these are thoughts I had at the time. 
Uh, sometimes I'm, as I'm speaking, the Holy Spirit reveals something, uh, we call that a revelation, to my spirit that comes up from my spirit into my mind and my thoughts. That, that's revelation. And there'll be things that I'll be going along preaching on, and uh, all of a sudden I'll see something I've never seen before. What's happening? I'm giving out the revelation I've got, and the Holy Spirit's adding to it. To them that have, will more be given. If I have spent the time in the Word, I'm already getting some revelation just by what the Word says. But if I'm putting the time in and listening to the Holy Spirit, and I'm open to respond to what He says, He's going to say, now let me tell you about that. This, this is what you know. Let me tell you what I know. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like that. I've, I've learned to say, Holy Spirit, I know this much, but beyond that, I'm kind of a blank. Tell me what you know about this. Don't you think that's a good thing to do, to begin to rely upon the teacher of the church, the Holy Spirit? Show me what you know about this. What do I need to know that I don't know? Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> we need to nurture this, uh, this ability or effort to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. I put there in the notes WPL. That's the next three things on the on the notes there. Spend time in the Word. Oh, I mean, I got to do something. Yeah, you got to do something. Don't expect me to do it all for you. All I can do is serve up the meal. You got to go home and eat it. Amen. Th this is food to go, spiritual food to go. You got to take it with you. You can't leave it here. All right. Spend time in the Word. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation of the Word. Hallelujah. Spend time praying in the Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you that you need to know. Spend time listening. This is where one of our biggest failures in prayer is we don't listen. You're praying, you're asking, you're crying, you're begging. You know, I need an answer. I need to know. I need, a, you know. And, and then, you know, once you think, well, I prayed all I know how to pray. Amen. You get up and you go out and do something. And, and the Holy Spirit goes, wait a minute. I got something. Come back here. And you don't even hear that because you're off onto something else. Hello. Amen. Spend time listening. And, and here's what we do. We keep a notebook and a pen or pencil handy. And we write things down that come to us while we're praying. Why? Because I want to go back and study in the Word. If it's not in the Word, I know that was the devil trying to fool me. So I want to write it down and I can go back and I can study it. Amen? Then go to the Word, study it out. Get the Scripture evidence for the things that you're getting while you're praying. Say, well, I'm praying... The, Holy, the devil can't sp speak to me while I'm praying. Oh, yes, he can. You ever get sleepy while you're praying? The devil's trying to stop you. You ever get hungry <laughs> while you're praying? The devil's trying to you know, interfere. He's trying to sidetrack you. Oh, the devil will speak to you while you're praying. Jesus went in the garden to pray. Who came to him? The devil came to him. He went in the garden to talk to the Father, and the devil comes. So don't tell me the devil won't come into your prayer closet and try and talk to you and sideline you and distract you, because he will. Amen? He was called the tempter in the garden where Jesus went to pray. That's what, what it was. he's labeled there as the tempter. All right? He'll tempt you to quit praying. Ah, uh, you know, you've been on your knees for five minutes. That's a long time. It don't take five minutes to tell God what you need, you know. You got other things you got to do. You got to get up and clean the house. You got to get up and you got to deal with your business. You, you know, you know the most important thing you can do is spend time before God. When you do that, He can show you how to cut through all the other stuff and get the results you're looking for. Amen. Amen. All right. Second Corinthians thirteen one. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. When you think you're getting something from the Lord. Or the Holy Spirit speaking and showing you something. That's why we go back to the Word. Let everything be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. If it happens to be something that you cannot find in the Word, you go to your pastor. Say, Pastor, I was praying about this. Here's what I got. I couldn't find a scripture. Is this God or is this just the devil trying to sideline me? That's why we are here, <laughs> is to help you stay on track. Amen? help get you in the right See, that's what a shepherd does he he keeps you on the track going in the right direction trying to keep you moving into green pastures instead of in the old weeds and stuff hallelujah don't want you falling off a cliff 
Praise God. All right. Now, there's another way the Holy Spirit reveals things to us. We talked about this. If you got the notes, you know where I'm going. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. How much time I got left? 30 minutes. That much? It's 11.30? Oh, yeah. Actually, I started 10 minutes late. Well, what time is it right now? It's uh, 11.30. 11.30. Okay. Well, I got some. What's that? About 15. About 15? You're trying to cut me down. <laughs> All right. For, he's got a, he's got some place to go. That's what it is. He, he told me before the service, so I know what he's trying to pull. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's for that, I'm going to slow down. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 14.2 <laughs> You know, you can, you can have fun with the things of God and in church. You know that? Yeah. We're not here to play, but we can enjoy. Uh, actually, I believe God has a great sense of humor. I believe the Holy Spirit has a sense of humor. I believe the angels of God have a sense of humor, like with my ring. That, that was I, I had to just laugh at that. I just when it, I found that ring in that box all sealed up that had been there since be, when we moved, and I had not opened that box. And here we had taken a trip, and I had the ring with me. And I get back, and I decided one day to open the box. And there's the ring on top, inside that box. That's it. I, I started laughing. I said, "God, you're funny. <laughs> you're funny to do something like that to get my attention. It shows you how big He is. Amen. Did you find First Corinthians fourteen two yet? All right." We're talking about a subject that uh, dealing with the Holy Spirit and how he speaks to us. But in some churches, this is not a subject people want to talk about. Some churches don't believe in this. Some churches would rather not have it dealt with in the public setting of the church. They'd rather take you in the back room and deal with this issue. Well, it's the Word of God. So we're going to deal with it. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 from the King James. For he that speaketh in a what? Unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man, everybody say no man. No man, no man understands him. Now, uh, God is absolute. When he says something, that's the way it is. If he says no man can understand you, the excuse that some people give, well, you know, it's an earthly language. It's just we don't understand it. It's probably from some other country, some other, uh, uh, you know, uh, language group in the world. No, he said no man can understand you. Why? You are not speaking an earthly language. Hallelujah. No man understands him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now, we've talked this before, so some of you know where I'm going. In the spirit, praying in tongues is called by the apostle Paul praying in the spirit. Amen. Now, you can pray in English by the spirit. That means he's guiding your prayers, right? Right? But when you are praying in the Spirit, you are praying a heavenly language. It is not an earthly language. All right. So, he says, No man understands you, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. He speak. Well, what good is a mystery if I can't figure it out? How many of you like to watch mystery movies? We, we like to watch Hallmark. They now have three channels. Uh, one is drama. One is mysteries. And there's some on there we like to watch. Uh, anybody watch Hallmark Mystery Channel? Oh, yes. Anybody watch that? Who watches that? One? Just just us and Carol, huh? Okay. Uh, they've got some interesting ones on there. And there's some we don't we, we don't like the acting or we don't like the character the, the actors or whatever, but then there's some we do. And uh, so mystery, what's that mean? It means you can't see where it's going, you don't know what's going on, you don't know who done it. <laughs> and by the end though, you you'll figure it out because they'll tell you, right? But here it says, you speak mysteries when you're praying in the Spirit. So go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 now. Amplified translation. We're going to start at verse 1. Hallelujah. Well, we've got a long list of people watching this morning. Glad you're all with us. Hope you're taking notes. Praise God. You can find this posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, probably later on this evening. If you haven't gone to our YouTube channel, Pastor William Emmons, click on that, find me, subscribe, and you can watch the things we've been preaching the last few months. It's all on there. Hallelujah. All right, you got it? Chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. As for myself, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony and evidence or mystery and secret of God concerning what he has done through Christ for the salvation of men. 
in lofty words, in other words, I didn't come to you with lofty words of eloquence, or human philosophy, or human wisdom. Now, I've asked this question before, so those of you that heard this, you know where I'm going. What wisdom, what, what language did natural human wisdom teach you? Well, we speak in a nation that the official language is what? English. English. So human wisdom taught you English from the time you were young. You got it from your parents. You got it when you were in preschool. You got it when you went to kindergarten. You got it when you went to elementary school. You got it in high school. You got to study English, right? Okay. So human wisdom teaches us English. Some got more than others. Some do pretty good. And some, <laughs> you wonder if they actually learn the language. <laughs> Praise God. So he said, when I came to you, I didn't come to you with something that came from human wisdom or human philosophy. For I resolved to know nothing, to be acquainted with nothing, to make a display of the knowledge of nothing, and to be conscious of nothing. In other words, he said, I had nothing. <laughs> Among you except Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and him crucified. And I was in or passed into a state of weakness and fear or dread and great trembling after I came among you. And my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive, enticing, and plausible words of wisdom. That's natural wisdom. But they were in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power, a proof by the Spirit and power of God operating on me and stirring in the minds of my hearers the most holy emotions and thus persuading them. Verse 5, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, or human philosophy, but in the power of God. Yet, when we were among, when we are among, listen to this, catch this. Verse 6, when we are among full-grown, spiritually mature Christians who are ripe in understanding, we do impart a higher wisdom. I'll let that sink in for a minute. Who's he talking to? He's talking to people that are more mature. Spiritually, right? When we are among the full-grown, spiritually mature Christians who are ripe in understanding, we do impart a higher wisdom. In other words, we can speak of greater revelation among people that are believers that are studying the Word because they're growing. They're open to learning and increasing. Amen? All right. The knowledge of the divine plan, previously hidden, but it is indeed not a wisdom of this present age or of this world, nor of the leaders and rulers of this age who are being brought to naught or to nothing and are doomed to pass away. But rather, verse 7, what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God once hidden from human understanding and now Revealed to us by God. God revealing his wisdom to us. Amen? Hallelujah. That wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our, what's the next word? Glorification. To lift us into the glory of his presence. How did he reveal it? Now he talked. He started off talking about when we're praying in tongues, we're praying, in, you know, we're praying by the Spirit. We're praying mysteries, right? <clears throat> he talks here about the hidden things, the wisdom of God, hidden in a mystery. And he says, well, but when we're around mature Christians, he's talking about people that I believe are us. He says we speak other words, words given to us by the Holy Ghost. Amen. He goes on in uh, cha uh, chapter two again, First Corinthians two, verse nine. On the contrary, as the scripture says, what eye has not uh, seen and ear has not heard and has not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared, made, ready, made and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. Verse 10, yet to us, God has unveiled and revealed them, them secrets, them wisdoms, those mysteries, by and through his Spirit. For the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God, the divine counsels and things hidden beyond man's scrutiny. For what person perceives or knows and understands what 
passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him. Just so no one discerns, comes to know and comprehend the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God. Given to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. And we are setting these truths forth in words. How is he setting the truth, these hidden mysteries, these wisdom that's been hidden? How is he setting them forth? Words. In words. <clears throat> Not taught by human wisdom. What human wisdom? What language? In, in, in us, it's English. Could be Spanish for you. You, you know, it depends on where you come from, right? But that's taught by human wisdom, human language. He said, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. Combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Spirit. It's pretty clear there if you have the guts to believe it. He's talking about when we're praying in the Spirit or in tongues... We may be speaking forth wisdom and hidden mysteries, but he's given us the Holy Spirit to reveal to us. And he starts by giving us a language that wasn't taught by human understanding, taught by the Holy Ghost. Amen? All right. Verse 14, But the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God, for they are folly, meaningless nonsense to him, and he is incapable of knowing them, of progressively recognizing, understanding, and becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned or estimated and appreciated. So, the next question is, what's spiritual language? We already know the answer to that. It's called tongues, right? right. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. I'm leading you down a trail here. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit in the Spirit he speak mysteries. What language did the Holy Spirit teach us? He taught us what we call, and what the Apostle Paul calls, tongues. It's a spiritual language, he calls it, not a natural language. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 13. Therefore, when you see the word therefore, you got to look and see what it's there for. Now, that sounds cute, but it's true. You gotta <coughs> stop and look. The person who speaks in an unknown tongue should pray for the power to interpret and explain what he says. When you are praying about something and you go over into praying in tongues about it, you still don't know the answers. You're, you're drawing upon the hidden wisdom, the hidden mysteries, but you, your mind still doesn't know them. So Paul gives us instructions. He says, if you're praying in tongues, pray for the power to interpret what's being said. Right? Hello? Verse 14 says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit, by the Holy Spirit within me, prays, but my mind is unproductive. In other words, I'm not getting any benefit. I'm just praying in tongues, right? That'll build me up spiritually, but it doesn't solve the problem that I'm dealing with. So he says, but my mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit. It helps nobody. Then what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that is within me. But I will also pray intelligently with my mind and understanding. He says, I'll sing with my spirit and I'll sing with my understanding as well. All right, first he said, if we pray in tongues, we ought to pray for the interpretation so we can get that hidden wisdom. All right. Because our mind is unfruitful. It's not getting results. All right? So pray and then ask the Holy Spirit to give you interpretation. And Paul goes on and says, I'll do both. I'll pray with my, by my spirit. But because I pray for interpretation, I will also pray with my understanding. He's not talking about your reasoning or your emotions. He's talking about praying out what you've been praying in tongues with your language that you normally pray through, pray with. Amen? your English, your Spanish, or whatever you normally use. All right. As we receive the interpretation, then we can pray with our understanding and our minds become fruitful and productive. 
We can begin through this method to draw out the hidden wisdom or the secret mysteries for those things that we are praying about. Hallelujah. See, we've been talking for months about the different ways God speaks to us. We talked about the inward witness. We talked about the still small voice. We talked about a number of issues. But this is one of them that, for whatever reason, there's been such a fight against it, you know, by people who don't believe in speaking in tongues or people that uh, think it passed away with the apostles. But one of the most powerful things we've got is this right here, that we can pray the hidden mysteries, the secret wisdom of God, hidden in a mystery, out by the Holy Ghost. He'll give it to us. We're speaking his language, and then we ask for the interpretation so we can get the knowledge and understanding in our minds and act on it. That's a powerful weapon that we've got. Amen? Amen. Amen. I've been thinking about taking a class at Pierce College. Um, a couple of, got a couple of singing classes over there. I've been thinking about taking a uh, uh, what's harmony class. So I, I don't know the first thing about singing harmony. I just think that I sing what I think I should sing, and everybody else has to work around me. I guess that would make me a lead singer. <laughs> but I thought if I could take a harmony class, they guarantee that when this class is over, you you'd be able to know all the different parts of harmony, and you can hear and you can tune in with the part that's missing. That's really good. But when we got the Holy Spirit, He's given us the harmony. How to blend the things of the spirit with the things of the natural? We get harmonization. They come together. We take the wisdom, the hidden, the mysteries, and we bring them into understanding so we can use them from the spirit realm in this natural realm that we're living in. That's harmony. Amen? But you didn't know how I was going to work that one in. <laughs> I didn't either. I <laughs> didn't plan to go there. <laughs> Praise God. Did you get something out of this? Yes. All right. Now I know it's Mother's Day, and I'm probably going to let you. What time is it? What do we got? Uh, it's a quarter to 12. Quarter to 12. Exactly what Daryl said. <laughs> so I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to do like I always do I'm going to mark my notes now those of you that get the notes you'll notice if you haven't yet realized it some, some of my notes in fact almost all of them pick up where I left off instead of starting a whole new subject so there are overlap on the notes any of you online that order the notes uh, you got to join the Timothy Club so we have to hear from you if you want to do that uh, what happens, I pick up where I left off, which means the notes from last week, I, I pick up there, and I start with that brand new today, and then where I stop here, I pick up next week. So I, there's something else I want to share with you that we're not done with yet. Amen? So your notes, you say, well, why didn't you just stop there? Well, I didn't know where I was going to stop when I sent out the notes last night. I didn't know I was going to stop right here at point number three. But now I know. So I'll start next week right there. If you don't have the notes, you might want to consider getting them. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. I want to, we haven't done this for a while. So uh, somebody on this side of the building, what'd you get? Somebody, what, what'd you get? What, what stuck out to you today? Anybody? Quick. We're, start, we're leaving early, so you got to hurry. Oh, come on. Nobody got anything on this side? Spend time in the Word. Thank you. <laughs> Over here. God will never let us uh, be tempted with more than we can handle. Boy, that's powerful. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't know if I can take any more. You know what? You've got the strength to, to do whatever needs to be done until you get the answer you, you need for that situation. Amen. Anybody else? One more person. Something that, yes, Willie. The Holy Spirit speaks to us through our spirit. Oh, man, that's he does. And in many different ways, facets of that, we've been seeing the different facets. We're going to see another one next week. I don't think, I'm not sure I've ever seen or heard this taught anywhere. Not that I'm, oh, look what I got. But this is something that we almost never talk about the next avenue. And I'm not going to give it away. So if you don't have the notes, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Father, you've spoken some deep things to us. You've given us revelation. Father, you've dealt with us about things in our own lives. And we thank you for that. And Father, we praise you this morning. We believe we have the mind of Christ because your word says so. 
And we have the teacher of the church in us because we've received that Holy Spirit that you sent. And we have a willing heart, Father, to learn to grow and to do the things you're calling us to do. So we thank you, Father, that even as we go through this next week, that we're going to hear the Holy Spirit ministering to us, not necessarily with our physical ears, but down inside, we're going to begin to sense the leading, the speaking of the Holy Spirit to us. And we pray, we take time to pray in the Spirit, Holy Spirit, that you're going to give us those hidden things, those hidden revelations and mysteries. And, and we're going to take the time to pray those things out and get that wisdom that's been hidden from human knowledge and understanding. And we're going to know how to apply that hidden wisdom, the heavenly mystery, into our earthly situations. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, thank you for doing what you did for us. You paid the price. You gave us a way and access back to the Father. Thank you, Lord. We know that you're seated at the Father's right hand today to make intercession for us. We know preparation is underway for your soon return. We're looking forward to that. But Lord, until you return, we will be your ambassadors, your witnesses, your voice in the earth, in our lives, our words, and our actions. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Anybody need prayer for anything? <clears throat> anybody need prayer we were supposed to have the lady that was here last week that we prayed for she has a friend that's been plagued by a spirit that she was going to bring this morning so she called Mary, Mary talked to her actually last night she said, I've got this friend it's a desperate situation so well, something happened obviously you know <laughs> you, you got to understand something when there's a place where you get truth where the Holy Spirit's allowed to minister and the word is allowed to go forth accurately without compromise the devil, when you hear the word, the Bible says when the seed is sown, that the devil comes immediately to try and take out the seed. Don't be surprised you get under attack. Just recognize it for what it is. The devil's trying to keep you from hearing the word. Say, well, pastor took too long this morning. He didn't recognize the mothers, or he didn't do this, or he didn't do that, and I don't like the way he does. And Well, you know, God put you here and made me your pastor. I didn't make me your pastor. But when that attack comes, understand what is going on. The devil is trying to steal from you what God wants in your life. Because when the seed is sown, Satan comes immediately. Jesus had a plan. He was on God's plan. And the tempter came to try and get him off the plan. He went into the garden to pray and talk to the Father, and the devil came and talked to him. When you come into a church where the word's going forth, do not be surprised. Now, some of you are just sticking out because you got guts and you're like me. You just won't give up. But there's other people that come in and then, you know, somebody doesn't like this, doesn't like that. It's too cold. It's too hot. You know all the excuses people give. And next thing you know, they're not here anymore. They're home and they're watching Brother Copeland or somebody else and, and uh, they're not hearing the word. Why? Because the devil came to steal that word that was implanted. The devil came to stop the plan. God had for them because they found a place where they can get that plan revealed and they don't recognize it's nothing that, that that offense that attitude has nothing but the devil lying to you and you got to get past that we all have to get past that sometimes the devil wants to attack me and say well you know what so-and-so said or what so-and-so did I have to put that behind me I'm not going to dwell on that I forgive and I release and I move forward what we all have to do amen so when we talk about these kind of things which is revelation finding out how to receive the hidden wisdom the hidden mysteries of God and the devil says I, 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 I don't want them knowing that so what's he going to do he's going to try and lie to you he's going to try and tell you the pastor kept on talking after he said he would quit <laughs> I'm just giving you a warning when the seed is sown Satan will come and try and steal the seed Amen. And we are not going to let that happen. That's, right. That's why some people come in, visit for a few weeks, then leave. Because they can't take that responsibility. The devil lies to them, and they don't know how, they don't yet have the equipment or the weapons to know how to fight it, and they don't stay long enough to learn. And they go off and upset, offended, whatever it may be. Well, I had somebody that doesn't live any further away from the church than we live, and they said, well, we're trying to find a church close to us, so we don't have to drive so far. 
eight miles. How long does it take us? Eight miles. It takes us less than 15 minutes to get from our house. To, it takes us about 10 minutes. I won't figure out the numbers there, but probably about 10 minutes, right? All kinds of excuses the devil gives us why we don't want to go to church today. It's Mother's Day. Well, what was it last week? Why, you know, I'm not, t you're all here, so I'm, I I'm just speaking to everybody out there. <laughs> all you guys. <laughs> Where were you last week and the week before and the week before? Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to move on. The preacher's on me right now. When this happens, it's like my, my it just wants to bubble out. I, it's hard to quit. And if you've never had that anointing hit you that way, it's when it does, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. It's, it's like being high on caffeine or something. It's just, it's, it's coming up. Just, where do I stop? I don't know. How do I stop? You just got to do it. So I do it. I do it. All right. <laughs> Praise God. Nobody needed prayer, so we're going to move on. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm. Y'all know it's hot wash <laughs> weight. <laughs> yes. It's, it's getting ready to change. The market, it, the market is, it's talking about housing. He's looking for, they're looking for an apartment. Right now, everything is way overpriced. They're overvalued. It has to change. It's a cycle, and it's going to change. I don't know if, if you're at a time situation where you, you need to move by a certain date or if you just want to move. What, why, what if you don't move? Yeah, yeah, I know. Greed. Greed hit the housing market big time. All right. Um, so we're going we're gonna to agree you want a house or a, a, well, a house or a, an apartment. What, you wouldn't want a house? Huh? If you can get it for the price of an apartment? <laughs> All right, a house or an apartment. Sometimes i got to get people to agree with what I believe. <laughs> Come on, let's step it up. <laughs> a house or an apartment that's within your budget that has what you need. You need what? Three bedrooms? Two bedrooms? Two bedrooms. How many bathrooms? Okay, you got to be specific about these things. Okay, so let's pray and agree with them for a house or an apartment that's within their budget that has at least two bedrooms and two bathrooms. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we come in agreement with them according to your word that says, if any two shall agree on earth as touching anything they ask, it shall be done. So, Father, here's what we're asking in agreement with what they've declared. We're asking you to provide and open up a door for them that it will be a house or an apartment that will fit within their budget. It will be at least the two bedrooms and two baths. And Father, it wouldn't hurt to bless them with extra. But Father, will provide everything they need and even give them desires that they've forgotten about. Father, we ask you to do it supernatural. We ask you to give, give you, we ask you to give them the money they need to make the move, deposits and, and whatever else. Father, just work it out where they can make the move smoothly and easily. In Jesus' name, we ask this and we agree together. And Father, because of your word, we declare it done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Don't be shocked at how God blesses you with something better than you thought. God's in the business of doing that. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, all you people on Facebook and and uh, what, what are we on? Periscope. Facebook and, and Periscope and uh, Twitter. Uh, we love you guys. We appreciate it. By the way, I sent a note out to some of our partners out there. We want you to know how much we appreciate you. You've, you've really been a blessing to us, and we pray for you every day. So we love you guys. Have a blessed week. And Daryl, are you ready to turn the cameras off? Yes. I'm closing for them. <laughs> I can sit here and say, okay, we'll see you next week and keep on going. You know, We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Have a great day. All right. Praise the Lord.